What is the story of science and scientists during the rise, rule, and fall of the Third Reich? Well, we tend to think of science as always on the side of liberty, as always on the side of enlightenment, as always on the side of enlarging human possibility. And here we have this phenomenon in the 1930s of really the world's leading scientific power, the Third Reich, uh, which collectively had won a big chunk of all the Nobel Prizes. Suddenly they go fascist, they go Nazi with Hitler. And instead of being primarily a source of resistance, science in many respects actually is a full collaborator in the most horrific forms of Nazi genocide, Nazi exclusion. And uh, that's kind of a, a, a relatively untold story in, in the sense that uh, when we think of science in the Third Reich, we think of Joseph Mengele injecting dye into the eyes of, of twins, or we think of horrific human experiments, and those are real. But it's also the story of a huge scientific apparatus, a bureaucracy, you could almost say, participating in every phase of the uh, campaigns of Nazi destruction. And what I looked at in particular in, in actually my first book was how physicians in particular, but also biomedical science, um, was collaborating with the regime and that it's wrong to think of the Nazi regime as anti-science. It's anti a particular type of science. In particular, it was radically against what they call Jewish science, communist science. Um, certain types of science they did not like. Uh, there's a whole nature-nurture uh, dispute in that period, and they're firmly on the side of nature, um, which interestingly gives rise to, rise to a very different type of science in the Soviet Union, by the way. The Soviet Union is more on the nurture side? The Soviet Union is on the side of the nurture side in the dimension of genetics, and this is sort of an untold story. I was actually gonna write a book about it until I was barred from access to the Soviet Union. Uh, there've been different times in my life where I was a Russianist. A Russianist, okay, we're gonna have to talk about that, but. I got excluded from uh, fulfilling that dream. But one of the things I was gonna look at when I got a Fulbright um, in the 1980s was to uh, go over and look at the anti-Nazi genetics and anthropology of the Soviets and how a lot of their Lysenkoist Lamarckism was actually anti-Nazi, anti-genetics on the nurture side of nature. And that's really an untold story. It's an uncomfortable story because it sounds like someone we might want to make heroes out of some out of the twisting of science in the soviet union but nonetheless there are these interesting complexities and what's amazing about nazi science is is how there was this collaboration and you're talking about a culture where they're inventing things like electron microscopy they're doing all kinds of uh, studies in anthropology so a lot of that's an untold story <laughs> 